Um, this podcast differs from the other podcasts that I've done uh, for two reasons. Uh, number one, I'm going to be using Prezi in this. Um, Prezi is a presentation tool. You can find it at Prezi.com. And what it allows you to do is to create these really cool flash-based um, presentations that aren't linear. In other words, it's not like a keynote or a PowerPoint where you have to go from one slide to the next. You actually can zoom around, and, and so that'll make sense. Um, the second reason why it's different than most of the podcasts I do is that it's not about content. It's about learning. Um, and what I'm finding this year is that I'm getting way more questions from students about how do I learn um, or how do I learn correctly or how do I learn different or I'm trying to learn and it's just not working out. And so these are some tips that I think could help. Um, I think it's a good sign that students are actually asking me how they learn. I think we're seeing a big change in that in education where students are starting to realize it's actually up to you to figure out um, how to learn. And teachers are there to help, um, but it's not their responsibility to make sure that you get it. Um, and so those are kind of the two things. I'd love to get comments, though, on, on any of this. Um, and so I've kind of chosen 10 things that I think are important. And so we'll zoom around to those. What we're dealing with today is something called metacognition. Metacognition essentially means that um, it's about thinking about thinking or learning about learning is a better way to think about that. And so I've got a big brain. And for those of you who are visual, this will be helpful. You can kind of remember some of it just from where things are placed inside here. Um, I'll also, since this is a Prezi, I'll put the web address for this Prezi right here. I don't know if my fingers are in the right spot. Um, and so you should be able to go view it and then kind of step through it on your own. So without further ado, here we go. This is my number one first. Uh, and that's the idea that you need to be honest and you need to be honest with yourself. Um, and so I've got this great MC Escher picture. Um, and so what I mean by be honest is that you have to be honest with, with yourself. In other words, are you learning the material or are, not, are you not? And you have to be the judge of that. Now, the best way for me to see if students are learning what, I'm, um, uh, what we're trying to learn or what I'm trying to teach better um, is if they can describe to me how it works. In other words, if I were to say, how does a toaster work? Um, a student who knows a little bit about, about a toaster could say that you put bread in it, you push down a little knob, and then it pops up and then you have toast. Um, and that would be kind of factual recall about a toaster. Um, but if you could describe it more uh, specifically to me out loud, not just saying that I read about a toaster, but saying toaster works like this. You put the bread in this slot, you push it down. It's got high resistance uh, coils that go through. It heats up as those electrons try to push through and that heats up the toast. There's a bimetallic strip in there with two types of metal that bend as it gets hotter and eventually it trips it and then eventually the toast comes up. And that's why you can't just push the toast down again. Uh, it'll make that rattling kind of noise, at least on older toasters. Now, if you could say that, then you have a really conceptual understanding, but you're not there unless you can describe that to somebody. It's impossible for me to do that now uh, in the classroom because I've got 30 kids in each class. And so you have to kind of find a way to do that. You have to talk to somebody and try to explain it to them. Um, my wife actually <laughs> uh, has to put up with that. I'll talk through ideas with her and she can ask me questions about it. She doesn't have to know what I'm talking about. She just has to listen. Um, so that's helpful. Next tip is the idea that you need to start early. In other words, if I could give you one tip that I learned in college, it's read ahead of your teacher. If you can stay ahead of the teacher, then you're going to do well. Uh, let me give you an example of this. I started posting these podcasts for AP Biology last spring. And so if you look on this chart, you can see how many are viewed each day of the videos. Now, this is like where we are kind of in October. Um, but if you look back here, here's when we had the AP biology test. And so the AP biology test was this day and the videos were viewed 1200 times, something like that the day before. Now, I don't think that was really helpful. In other words, learning, you can't do that the night before and you can't cram the night before the test. And so you have to start early and you have to stay ahead of the teacher. In other words, you can't ask good questions if you're reading it after they've talked about it in class. So start early. It's either watching podcasts or reading the book. Next one is the idea to engage. In, in, in class, I mean to physically engage. What does that mean? It means that you're paying attention in class. You're letting the teacher know that you're interested in what they're talking about. I can quickly scan around the room and I can see which of my students are serious about learning. And those are the ones that are looking at me or giving me direct eye contact. And so if you 
even if you have to fake it for a while. If you give them direct eye contact, if you're sitting upright, if you're asking questions, all of a sudden you'll find that you're engaging in the material. And so you just have to fake yourself into doing it for a while. It's just like smiling. If you can smile, uh, force yourself to smile, eventually you actually start to feel a little bit happier. And so engagement is the same way. And teachers pick up on that. Uh, they pick up on what students are actually paying attention to them and they'll give them more feedback and they'll give them more content. Also, sitting through a lecture can be really boring, but if you're forming a question in your mind as you're listening to that lecture and then you ask it, it really keeps you alert. Uh, and it also, I mean, it heightens everything inside you. And so you're, uh, you're more excited about the content. And so engage, give eye contact, be serious about your class if you're interested in learning. Um, next one is the idea to teach. In other words, you really won't learn material until you have to teach it to somebody else. Um, example of that, I never learned biology. I mean, I was a biology major in college. I never truly learned biology, molecular biology, even natural selection for that matter until I started teaching it in high school. And so you have to teach. An example of that is in Wikipedia. Why do people give to Wikipedia? Why do they give knowledge to Wikipedia? They're not doing it just to help Wikipedia. They're doing it to help themselves. And so you can teach by just talking to your mom and describing how it works or talking to a spouse or whatever. Um, but you can also do that by creating a wiki or, or creating a document where you become an expert on it and then you have to explain that to people. Okay, next idea is to study often. This is a wonderful curve. It's called the forgetting curve. And so if you look right here, this is where you get new information. And this is how long it takes for you to forget it. Now, what we found is that if you can get exposed to that the next day, then you can bump up your forgetting curve. And so you really wouldn't have to see that for another few days, which would bump it up again, and then you can eventually remember it. And so I don't know if you're familiar with the Rosetta Stone, which is a way to learn foreign languages, um, but it's based on this, uh, this curve or the forgetting curve. In other words, you want to see information, and then a day later you want to see it again, and then three days later you want to see it again. And so that reviewing is important. So study early, self. Uh, Self-evaluate is the next one. What that means is that you can't evaluate yourself when you actually have the test. If this is the first time you're evaluating your understanding, you're way too late. In other words, you have to self-evaluate. At every step of the learning process, you have to take quizzes, you have to take practice tests, you have to write questions that you then answer, you have to write essays. In other words, you have to evaluate where you are. And if you're not doing that throughout that whole learning cycle, you're just not going to get it at the end. You can't expect to learn it right at the end. Next is the idea of VARC. Um, you can take these online, a VARC profile. What it, V stands for is visual, A is oral, in other words, listening. R is reading and writing, K is kinesthetic. And so if you are a visual person, this Prezi would be very helpful. If you're an oral person, perhaps writing a song or listening to a podcast or a MP3 of this lecture would be important to you. If you're a reader or a writer, that's the R, then do that. If you're kinesthetic, that means do something. It doesn't mean like act it out necessarily, but it means that you have to be doing something while you're learning. And so for me, what I found, I'm fairly kinesthetic, is that I have to actually write. And so by physically writing, that allows me to connect my kinesthetic brain with my regular brain and so I can put knowledge in there and then it stays. Next is the idea to take a break. In other words, you can't just sit down for an hour and try to study. Um, so studying for a half an hour and then taking a 10 minute break is really, really important. Um, and it also ties in with that whole idea. For me, my best ideas invariably come in the morning when I go for a run. Um, and that's because I've thought about it for a while. I go out there, I take a break, I look at it from a new perspective, and then I have a better understanding. Next is the idea of please have fun when you learn. Um, this picture <laughs> found on Wikipedia and it just, uh, it's a funny looking guy and it makes me happy. Um, and so your learning should be the same way. In other words, you should make a study group, study with other people, enjoy learning, make a funny song, make a funny video. Um, those are all helpful. And then the last idea is that you need to set a goal. And so when, when you play soccer, um, they have goals on either side of the field. 
And those are, I love that name because you constantly work throughout the whole game. So this is Lionel Messi, um, plays for Barcelona. I love soccer, but it's the idea that you're going to have to push through constantly and there are going to be setbacks that whole time. And lots of times a soccer game will end 0-0 or 1-0, but it's not like they give up because they don't reach that. They constantly are working, and then they're eventually uh, trying to achieve that goal. And so to sum up, I love this uh, quote. It's by Gandhi. You should live life as if you were to die tomorrow and learn as if you were to live forever. Um, Learning is a skill that if you can pick it up in high school or early in your life, it's going to pay you benefits for the rest of your life. And so I hope that's helpful.